Hey there, Claudia. Hey, Larissa. How y'all doing? All right, we'll give everyone a few minutes to hop on here as usual. Before we get started, um, today we're going to be going over agent sites and landing pages. So we're going to walk through um, the first part. If you have not configured and even set up your agent site yet, we're going to be going over that first. And then after that, we're going to create a landing page, which is a separate page on the internet, um, something not connected to your agent site. So that would be something for like a first time home buyer seminar, or it could be for a listing or an open house sign in or a virtual open house as well. Um, you do have some options. So we'll go over some of that as well um, in the agent sites and landing pages. So I'll just keep an eye out here till we get a slow up of people joining on. We've got 10 of us right now. Glad to see you got on, Jose. Hey, Clark, it's Margaret. Can I just make a quick announcement? Most definitely, go for it. Awesome. For those of you that are on here, just want to remind you about our sales meeting today at 12 o'clock. The Zoom link has been text to you. It's also on our KW Solutions page. And we hope to see you all join us at 12 o'clock. Thanks, Clark. Sure thing, Margaret. Thank you. You're welcome, Kyle. Appreciate that. Just saw your chat down there. And for those of y'all that only heard about half of what I said or maybe missed it, we're going to be going over the basics today of agent sites and landing pages. Um, we're not going to get too in depth um, on any coding or anything like that. Um, I am not even, you know, fully aware of all the abilities with that. Um, but we're just going to keep it light and easy today um, just to make sure that you all have a, a good understanding of it and then questions can come from there. So I'm going to go ahead and get going here. Um, we got about 15 of us and we've slowed up on everybody joining in. So hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. And if you missed it, Margaret said, hey there Jose. And uh, if you missed it, Margaret just said that you do have your um, your office sales meeting here at noon today as well. And she posted that Zoom link on the Facebook page about an hour ago. So if you're missing that, that's gonna be on your Facebook page. But I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen and we will get rocking and rolling. All righty. Perfect. So just like everything else, of course, we're going to agent.kw for uh, your website so we can get into command. And we're gonna be working on agent sites and landing pages today, okay? So it used to be called sites down here on the very bottom left. We've got all of our icons and different things. Down here, it used to be called sites a few months ago. Now it's called consumer. And we're gonna go down and we're gonna click on consumer. And you'll see a, a landing page I created yesterday, which is something that we'll do today. So you can see up here, we have a few different options. We have in the consumer section, we have landing pages, which we talked about a minute ago. Those are individual pages for something great like a open house sign in or a first time home buyer seminar maybe for a listing if you want to create a specific landing page for your listing you could do that as well and then we've also got our agent site pages so this is everything that's on my website that i've already configured but we're going to still walk through the process in case you haven't yet so you can see when i initially did it you can also view any of your pages just by clicking the eyeball it'll open up a new tab for you Okay, so we'll go ahead and hop back up here. And if you have not done this before, if you've not configured your agent site yet, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna see configure your site. That's what we're gonna click on. And when you click on that, you're gonna see the options that you have for use of your sites. So what I'm highly recommending to everyone and what we're gonna be teaching on today is setting up your new KW agent site, your Kelly guide. But if you still wanted to use your Playster site and you felt compelled to do that, you can definitely do that. Or you can go to the marketplace as well. Um, I have not done that, I don't know what it provides. Um, but we're just gonna go to new KW sites today. 
So you can see what you can expect as we're going to go throughout this guide. You're going to choose your subdomain. Get Lakeisha in here real quick. You're going to choose your subdomain. You're going to do your theme and your styling, and you're going to create pages as well. Let's go ahead and get started. This is a compliance reminder. Of you're going to need to have your Market Center DBA logo. You're also going to need your ownership statement. Um, I have mine in the website footer, just like it recommends there. And then also, very important because KW is not responsible for verifying the accuracy of our websites. There are obviously hundreds of thousands of these websites. Um, they're not going to take the time to look at all these, and it's not their job to make sure that we're compliant. So we need to make sure that your DBA logo, that your ownership statement, and that all of your local board uh, lo laws and rules as well. Like for me, I have my IABS linked on there as well as um, the uh, consumer protection notice for TREC. And if you do not have your DBA logo downloaded or you don't know where that's from, you can click right here to go find it. It'll open up a new tab, won't lose anything that you've been doing over here. And you can scroll down. Here's where you can find that identity and style guide I've talked about a few times in my other classes. This is where you can get the actual, like down to the color code of the KW Red and all the different fonts they use. It's about a 40 to 50 page PDF, I believe, but good stuff if you're, um, you know, updating things like Canva, creating your brand and Adobe Spark, things like that. But you can just scroll down here and this is where you would get your Market Center logo from. And then there's all your other KW logos as well. So we're gonna acknowledge and continue keep on rolling from here. And of course, always feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question if needed. So here we're on our subdomain section right here. You see our little roadmap. So right now you can see this is what my subdomain is. Yours is not going to look exactly like this because I've already built this out. I'm just redoing it with y'all. Um, so here you've got your tips, of course. If you're choosing your subdomain, please complete the marketing profile to streamline this Kelly guide. I do highly recommend that if y'all haven't, that's the Kelly guide that's in your settings. Um, so you'd click on settings and then connect and you'd be able to make sure everything looks good there. That's where it pulls all this information from and we're gonna go there in a minute anyway, um, just to show y'all because um, there's some things you can change. So on this one, my subdomain, um, once you release a subdomain, you can only have one. So like per agent, you can only have one .kw.com subdomain registered to you. So if I chose something other than Clark Mundy for my subdomain and I confirmed it, someone else, anywhere, any of you could log on and change your subdomain then to Clark Mundy just like this. It releases it immediately once you choose a new one. So it's always updating um, on the availability of the subdomains. Obviously, you've got your info right here on you know 30 characters, which is a very long subdomain. Wouldn't recommend that. And then we can also scroll down here. You can just get an idea of what everything looks like just on that first page. And then we'll click on marketing profile right here. So this is what pulls in from your settings in command that we'll also go to in a minute. So can't change your market center, but you could change your, your name, add in your business address for your office, your job title if you're on a team. Got all your phone numbers in here as well, biography. This is something I've just had typed up. We've got our license number, of course. So here is where our compliance and everything comes in. Compliance and legal footer. I'll show you all how to do this after the fact because um, you'll need it anyway on your, um, on your profile. But each office is independently owned and operated there. And then also what I was just talking about, the compliance. So this is on the local level that that little message was mentioning of your local board. Um, requirements just for compliance. So I've got the title right here as information about broker services. So these come down at the very bottom of the page on this one. You can see the ownership statement here. And then I've got the IABS and the Trek Consumer Protection Notice. I just wanted to show you all too for the IABS. Um, I'll do the consumer first. For the Consumer Protection Notice, this is just the Trek website. And I don't remember, I think our um, transaction coordinator director of ops for our team sent this to me I don't know where to get it from um, so if you do want to copy that nice lovely long code you can do that or I can send it to you um, and then for the IABS um, if you remember from our creating templates with DocuSign um, I filled out one 
from that and I downloaded it and put it in Google Drive. So that's what this is. This is a public file in my Google Drive or either that or in our team's Google Drive, I can't remember. But I wanna have this as well. And you want it to be filled out with all the information. You can't just put a blank IBS up here. They've got a, you know, the public has to know how to get a hold of your broker and office supervisor, all of that fun stuff. So that's what these are right here for your compliance. Legal footer, I don't have any images I wanna put there. My profile picture right here. So the DBA logo, I've already uploaded that. So yours would say Central 75 right here or Central maybe. If you're on a team or if you have a logo that you want to upload, feel free to do so right there. So, and this is what it's saying the example looks like. So the KW logo, and then to the right is where your logo goes. So that's what this is up here. So you see KW red, and then the Monday group for us. And then you can also input your social media links and those will come down here at the bottom as well, I believe, wherever they may be hiding. But it'll be linked on the page or on the site rather. So I've got our team Facebook page linked in there. I've got our team Instagram as well. Um, also, this is a great spot. Um, highly recommend this. If you don't know your short code or you don't know your um, the way to share your new consumer app, feel free to just copy that link. And maybe even I just hit control C or you can copy it, paste it. And then if you were so inclined, so you never forget it, you can just hit download and you could name it. Um, app and bam now you're never losing it so just a little pro tip there for you so now that we're good to go on all of this i'm going to hit save and continue so congratulations you have saved it so now we're on to style and theme we're on number two now so here we've got two options for our colors it shows right here there's a red line and a box as well uh, in addition to the KW, but really the main difference on this is honestly just the logo. So you see the KW red, I click dark, it goes to a dark. So if you like a really simplistic monochromatic look, like with a black or gray logo, kind of like ours, if you like that, go for it. Or if you like red, I like a little pop of color just here and there. So we're gonna leave it like that. Now we're here on our home page. So now we're editing what the uh, first page is that um, the public is gonna see. So find your dream home. That's something that I wrote in there. Um, you can put in whatever you'd like. Um, if you even want it to be funny with everything right now, you know, find your post or, you know, something like that. If you wanted to do something funny, you could do that with everything going on right now, just to be lighthearted. For your hero images right here, these are the cycle of photos that are gonna go through whenever, um, it's on the slideshow here. So you can either upload images and here are the uh, little points right here. Um, it can be a JPEG or a PNG. They've got the size right there. You can upload up to five photos, so only five. So say we're all here in DFW. Say you wanted to use some photos of the DFW Metroplex, you could certainly do that. Um, just make sure you have permission from whoever's photo it is um, that you can do that, just as a little disclaimer. And you can preview as well by clicking this and you'll see what the site changes to whenever it's looking at that specific home uh, hero, uh, sorry, homepage hero image rather. So here's how we do that. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Now we're on to content. So this is the first page, then this is the only page as well that it, other than the homepage that it force creates for you when you're uh, doing your um, configuration of the site for the first time. It automatically creates this company profile page. You can change what this is called, but right here, it could be about us. You can make the slugs. It does not have to have a dash. If you want it about us to be one word without a dash, you can do that as well. Um, whatever you wanted to put here, most of the videos that I've even seen on YouTube about this page, most of the agents aren't using this specific page. They're wanting to create their own. And I'll show you how to delete pages as well here in a minute once we finish up. Um, one thing also that you're really going to want to make sure that you have on every one of your pages on your site, on your agent site, is you're going to want an SEO description. And an SEO description is a one to two sentences of coherent uh, language, like coherent sentences. But what it really is for is for keywords for Google searches. So SEO, search engine, engine optimization, rather search engine optimization. 
that's how Google and Bing and other Yahoo, that's how um, those different sites find, you know, your page and send you to the top of the lists. So I want to have my name, licensed realtor, the city, buyers, sellers, investors, homes, purchase, all these different words. When people Google Clark Mundy realtor, this will help me get more people on my page. So you definitely want to make sure, even if it's something as simple as this, I took this, um, this verbiage and just added in my name from another agent that I saw. Um, so it's however you want to do it. Um, but I highly recommend having it on each of your pages in your site. And like I said, you can even just highlight all of it and copy it. And there I've got it copied and I can just paste as we go. So this is the SEO part of the page. And now we've got the content as well. So if we wanted to change this to, you know, it could be about Clark, you can see the editing there as we go, you can type, and it puts everything in there. You could also change your photo right here with the upload. So you've got all these different options right here. I've also got footer title and paragraph as well, if you did need to put that right there. But I'm going to go ahead and skip this because we're not going to be creating on this anyway today. This is just for y'all's learning sake. So you can either hit skip or just continue. And we're going to delete that page anyway, so it doesn't really matter. About me as well. So here's what this one looks like. This is where we're at. We're now on number three on the content. So we just did navigation. Let me see. We've got a chat real quick. Does each page have an SEO description for a video page, video open house verbiage? Yes, that's correct. Now, I can't remember, Kyle, and we'll look as we're going. I can't remember if there's an SEO description for the landing pages as well, or if a landing page doesn't have one. I think it does, but I can't remember for sure. So if you were doing a landing page for a virtual open house with a video of it, um, if there is an SEO description, then yes, you would want to change that verbiage and make it, you know, something along the lines of, I'm, I'm just spitballing, but um, this virtual open house for 123 Main Street, you know, something along those lines, just make sure you've got your keywords in there. Um, so we'll double check that on the landing page here in a minute, because I think that's kind of what you're talking about, Kyle. So let's say we didn't like about me, say we wanted to change it to something more personal like me, Clark. So we could do that. Sometimes it takes a second to fix itself, or it might just be when we uh, continue. And then if I instead, you know, I changed what was about me, we could change it to me, Clark, as well, if we wanted to do that. And then SEO description, I've got the same one right here that I had on the other page. Okay, we'll hit continue. And I'm sorry, I didn't hit uh, content on this one, but you can come in here into content as well and see all of this. So plenty of options there for you. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. And then here's, you know, kind of the contact us um, section of this. So this is what they're seeing right here. So this is the page title that you're going to see when you're looking at um, agent sites on. So here, let me just show you. So when you're looking down here on consumer the page title is not necessarily what the public is seeing. That's what it says here. So you see right here for the name. So on this one, contact us, contact us. That's what it's getting at right there. So you see right there, because I just wanted y'all to understand the difference between page title for the SEO and then the content is where you can actually change. That's what I put right there. Have a question? Let's chat. And then you can type in also what the message hints are right here. So for the um, for this part right here where you're asking them to put anything. You know, you can just have your, your different verbiage in there um, based on what you're doing for the specific uh, site or landing page. So now we're good to go. We hit submit and we're all good. So we have completely finished. Obviously we've gone through all four steps, we're good to go. So this was back in October of last year is when Agent Sites launched and you could go through and click anything else out of here you wanted to, but for our sake we're just going to go ahead and hit the x and now what i wanted to show you all real quick so like i said last time on settings up here we're going to go into our marketing profile real quick through settings in connect and i want to show you all something because like i was just saying about where it pulls all of the information from that it auto populated all of that that we just did well my there we go being difficult so we can click on connect settings 
quick let me get Christopher in here. All right, so you can click on connect settings over here and go to marketing profile. And when you do that, you'll see everything that we had just done that it had pulled in from. Well, one thing I did this morning, see right here, so it changed, it actually reverted back. So this is good for me teaching y'all. For me, I don't like when phone numbers are all jumbled together with all the numbers. It's not as easy to read for the consumer and everyone else. So I like to go ahead and add in my dashes. And if you do that here, now I'm um, contradicting myself because I did this an hour before the class and hit save and now it's reverted. So I'm not sure what the deal with that is, but for an hour or so it, it worked out nice. Um, but that may just be a little hiccup right now with saving or something with command. I was also having an issue this morning when I would click contacts, the whole site would freak out and like basically crash on me. So command may just be having some updates this morning. So be, be patient with it. Um, but anyway, if you want to add in any dashes or make any changes, this is where in settings, this is where it pulls in all your information from. So if you needed to change anything, add your legal footer text, this is where you can do that. Upload your legal footer links. Because even if you did it on configuring the site, I don't know if it communicates with it, uh, with the marketing profile to then automatically do that every time, or if you do it through configuring the site instead of your settings, I'm not sure if it will talk to each other um, and save it. So just double check that, look in your settings, make sure your marketing profile is set up to make sure that you can set up your site if you have not. And then here's a link as well for your app, if you want to look at that as well. So see, this is just my, my landing page for my, my app. So awesome options right there. Any questions right now before I continue on and we go and start a landing page? Just wanted to give you all a sec, make sure I'm taking care of everyone. All right, I will take the silence as we are good to go. So I'm gonna keep on trucking then. So. And you can also check out the Kelly guide as well at any time if you needed to see that again here in your marketing profile. So we'll go back down to consumer. I'll click on that. So this is one I had already created and you can see you have the toggle on or off setting. So you can set it to inactive by turning it off. So it's green, meaning it's good and it's going. You can also turn it off. Turn it right back on. So cool options here. So you could have created, you know, tens or hundreds of even different landing sites for different things over a certain amount of time. And then you can toggle which ones are on or off. Obviously, if you've got a new listing um, or a listing that's on the market, once that thing closes, you're not going to keep that landing page open. Um, or at least there's not really a point to um, if you don't have any lead capture form on there. So you can go ahead and toggle off that way. But like I said earlier, we have our landing pages, we have our agent site pages as well. And then you can also see, so the first time we had done configure your site, if you've never done it before, don't hit configure your site again. If you've already done it, do not hit configure your site to go in and edit. Click on site and app settings. If you do that, it basically resets you. It, it thinks you're starting over from scratch every time you do that. So hit site and app settings. And here you can edit quickly some different things without being in that fully blown out editing guide. So here you can change the text on the home page if necessary. You can also go in and see your URLs. You could change your subdomain if necessary. You cannot select custom domain and we cannot do that because this is the kw.com. Remember that's what we selected when we were starting the process, which is what I recommend y'all do. And then you can also see your app text code and the URL to download your app as well. And then you could change your theme if you needed to do that and update that. And you can also go to your site pages, okay? So you can click on these and you can see what is in them SEO wise. You can't edit the content from here, but you can do this. And then you can click on the three dots right here and you can delete the page or you can select it as well and move it around or you can create a new page. So, but if you wanted to edit one, you could continue. So I just want to make sure that y'all are aware on how to do this from both ends. If it's your first time doing it, or if you've done it before and just need to get back in and make some edits as well. I've got a lot of things open on my computer. So my, my RAM is struggling. It's being slow today. I'm sorry. 
Well, anyway, you can go in and edit that way. We're gonna go ahead and jump on the landing pages though. But that's how you get back into edit. So for that company profile that it made us create, I'm not actually gonna use that. And to be clear on this, if you're in site page settings and you delete something, there is, it does not ask you twice. There is no type in delete if you're sure. It is done when it's done. If you click that delete button, it's gone. There's no retrieving it. There's, you know, and you can't duplicate landing pages either as templates, like in designs, you can't do that. Um, so it's, it takes a little bit of time to create these. So just making sure that y'all understand, do not hit delete if you do not mean it. So on company profile though, I do mean it. I'm gonna hit delete, click to confirm. So you do get two clicks there. So click to confirm and then it's gone right there. So we're all done there. So that's where we were right there. We're gonna go back to landing pages though now, and we're gonna create a new site up here on the top right, okay? And when we do that, if you wanted to add a page to your site, you could do that here. But today we're gonna to do an as a standalone. We're gonna do a landing page, okay? And a landing page is a standalone. So I'm gonna click on that up here. We're gonna be doing, so for the sake of this today, we're just gonna do an open house um, template um, for a virtual open house, just given the times with everything going on. Um, like I've said earlier, you could do this for a listing, you could do it for a first time home buyer seminar, you could do it as a open house sign-in sheet um, as well. So we'll, we'll do that one and then I'll also show you how to do a virtual one, just so you have two open house options. So first off, you can see over here our widgets right here. And do not freak out or be afraid. That will look weird. It may not look weird for me, but it might look strange for you the first time you do this and drag and play with this because you have to click configure. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm gonna start off first by choosing the branded header. And I chose this one because it's a little less lengthy for an open house page than this agent branding one is. You see on this agent branding, much more, it's honestly kind of looks like it'd be great at the bottom of a page, but depending on what you're doing when you're dragging, if y'all remember the green lines above means it'll go above. Branded header, you can move it down, kind of switch things around from there. Let's see, it doesn't like what I'm doing, it's freaking out on me. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and uh, back these out real quick. Undo, undo. Oh, well, it's being difficult. We'll go ahead and back out on this one real quick. I made it angry. Go back to our creator here. So we're going to choose the branded header just for the sake of today. And so it pops in your KW and your team logo if it is uh, something you've put in there. Now you'll notice this is something that I've realized for me. Um, this is just something that I have to deal with because I need to uh, update my headshots sizing um, based on commands recommendation. Command recommends a 360 by 360 pixels. Um, if you don't know what that means, no worries. But basically my image is too narrow and that's why it's pulling in my left shoulder over to the right of it. Um, I haven't seen this issue with other people or heard of this issue with others. Um, I think it might just be because my own image is too narrow. So just to keep that in mind, too much weight lifting, yeah. So anyway, there's your agent uh, branded, or not agent branding, but branded header rather right there. And now let's see what we were gonna do. So for the instance of this, say we're doing a real open house, everything is back to normal. So this is gonna be a lead form and we're gonna be having an iPad in this scenario that people are gonna be signing in on in the open house. So this landing page that we're creating will be pulled up on this open house or on this, uh, sorry, uh, iPad rather for this open house. So let's say we wanted to do the branded header. We also wanted to do the lead capture Get Cassie in here real quick. Hey, Cassie. So we've got our lead form in here. Let's say I also wanted to do the listing as well. So it'll pull in from the KWLS. And just like I said, I'm dragging and dropping on this. Okay. So you see how this looks? It says 300 Hilltop View. It configured for an Austin address. It's going to pick this one just about every time. So we're going to go down here. Let's see, I'm gonna add listing. Let's say, let's do a market snap as well. We'll do that after this. So let's say it was a market snap. If you just drag to the bottom of a widget that you're looking at, like the last one you've currently made. So when I drag something, I'll just drag it as far to the bottom as I can on the newest widget. And then let's say after the market snap, we'll also do a legal footer. Um, you could also do testimonial captures, 
download my app. A testimonial capture would be great for something like a first time home buyer seminar, something where you're getting feedback or even a class you're teaching. Like if I did one for a QL class, I guess, um, for young adults, I could do that and get testimonials that way. And then you can also add videos, which is great. Um, download your app, that's new, I haven't seen that, but I'm just gonna finish off today for this with a legal footer for the end of this. Let's see here, did it drag it? Let's see. There we go, there's our legal footer. So you can see through here, as you're hovering on the top left, it'll tell you which one you're on. And you can also see what the view is gonna be on a tablet, on a phone. You can see how the different things on the website will look. So we'll go back to desktop for this. So now we've got all these weird looking widgets and a roadmap to finish making this. So we're gonna hit configure widgets. And now you'll see we have some that are green and some that are white for check boxes. So we'll just start with branded header and go from there. So like we said, we're gonna be doing this one as an open house sign in at a, at a real open house where people are coming in, we're getting some foot traffic. So maybe we say, welcome to, so we'll just use, and these won't update until you hit save and apply, by the way, so just so you're aware. So for your headshot, I don't have a wider one right now. That's something I'll need to figure out. So I'll need to leave that as is. You can fix your name, phone number, email, all of that. So like I said earlier, my phone number did appear like this because it was pulling from the marketing profile before. So I can just hit save on this one and show you. So all of my info did look like this and I did not really like that. I like to have the spacing. So just saying to show you what it changes, it had corrected and put in the hyphens there for me. Got your email address. And then if you have a team logo as well, you want on there, or if you don't want it for some reason, and this isn't affiliated with the team, you can hit delete as well. So we will hit save and see that updates automatically. So now we've got welcome to 9125 Farmer Drive. So up here on the top right is where we're gonna to toggle between these. So we'll go ahead and go on to the next one. So usually if this was just a lead capture form, this is what it pulled. Um, no, this actually isn't what it pulled. It's just one word different than what I had put on my site. But anyway, you could have that as just that if it was just a regular lead capture form, but because this is an open house sign in, Let's say, please sign in. Because ideally this person looking at this site is holding your tablet at your open house, or at least walking around you, if not standing in front of you. And they know right off the bat, okay, this is, they want me to sign in, as you've already mentioned it to them verbally, I'm sure. So we can go up here and go to the next one. No listings selected. So let's go ahead and browse listings. So for this one, I'm just picking our, uh, one of our team's listings that I'd made a virtual open house on. Is all of this doable from an iPad slash tablet or a desk slash laptop? I highly recommend doing any of your editing for your KW site at the very least on a desktop. Um, I would recommend, you could, you could do other things in command on a, on a tablet, but for site creation, I'd probably recommend doing it on here. I just haven't created on a tablet. I, I just like the sit down and tactile, the big screen. Um, that's just how I like to do it. Um, it. I'm reading a chat, by the way, everyone. Um, so it's really up to you on how you want to do it. I'm sure you can do it on a phone, I guess, or on a tablet, but I would recommend just sit down on a laptop or a desktop. Um, so anyway, you can go ahead and search your listing right here. So this is the one that we're selecting today. So you can hit select. And when you do that, all of the uh, images pull in from the MLS, okay? So you could select as many images as you want. Or no, I'm sorry, you can't actually. This is just one image, or you could do a custom image as well and upload. Um, but this is the image that it's gonna show first, and then it's gonna cycle through all of the rest of these as well from the MLS. And I don't believe you can edit this. You can't select, like if you have all these pictures on the MLS, you can't not use some of them then on this site. I think it just pulls everything without an option to change. So we'll hit save. And I'll scroll down and show you all now that difference. So we've got please sign in. Now we'll scroll down to see. We've got our first picture right here. Pulls in the address. This one is pending currently. So it says pending. Oh, see, and it thinks I wanted to delete that. So just for your knowledge, I barely clicked that and kind of moved my mouse and it deleted it almost immediately. Um, let's see if I can 
fix that. It looks like I can't. So just so you're aware, if you're clicking around on this stuff, it might delete things quickly. Um, let's just hit save and apply and see if that refixes it. And we'll pick a new photo as well. Say we wanted one of kind of the front door area instead of just a up front of the house shot. We'll scroll back down. Yep, see, so it really did delete that pending for good. So just so you're, for your knowledge, I did not know that. If you click around on any of these things, see it's not doing it now, but it did delete that just now. So anyway, just be careful clicking around on this. So that's the first image it'll show. I'll go ahead and hit right and go next. So now header and postal code up here. So this is going to be down here for, so this is all just for the listing. I forgot to show you this as well. So it's cycling through all our images down here. You can also hit the arrows. And then it also pulled in all of this from the MLS as well. So I'm going to quit, quit dragging around before I delete something else that it doesn't want me to. But anyway, you can see all of your info about the house. You've got a map as well of where this house is on Google Maps. And now we're on the new market snap. That's what we're editing right now. So you can see for the header text, this one says Barton Hills neighborhood trends. So for this one, I know that this, her uh, this neighborhood rather is heritage. So we could even put what's going on in heritage. All right, and then when you type in a zip code, this is all pulling from next door. And so when you type in a zip code, just like on that app, or if you're creating a snap through Kelly, it'll pull up all the different neighborhoods here as well. And something to keep in mind, if there are several spellings, like on the MLS that it pulls from tax, or I'm not sure how Nextdoor gets all other different um, neighborhood names and subdivisions, but if you've got some that say, see Villages of Woodland Springs South, Villages of Woodland Springs North, those are the same subdivision, just two different parts of it. So just make sure, see we've got Heritage Trace for this one, but that's actually not the subdivision for this house. We're gonna scroll down because it's actually just Heritage. Got Heritage Glen as well. But this one, let me see where it went. Well, this being difficult. I'm probably just missing it, but I'll just pick one of these for the sake of it. We'll say it was Heritage of Park Vista. I found it yesterday, but I'll hit save and apply. And then when we do that, we can scroll down to our snap and you can see it's got all this. Oh, it doesn't have any statistics because that we picked one that's not really a it's one whole street. Let me pick a different one so I can actually show y'all. Heritage. There it is. It was missing me. Just plain heritage is the actual subdivision for this house. So we can scroll down here. What's going on in heritage? And it pulled in. So that actually is the correct info right there. That's the actual subdivision. I know for sure. So here it pulled in all of our snap info about that specific one. It's got all that great info. Um, sold and sold price per square foot. Those were um, something they were having trouble with. So it's nice to see that they've updated that on commands in, which is great. So assuming everything looked good here, we can hit next and go on down to our legal footer right here. So we've got Facebook link to our team page, which pulled in from the marketing profile. If you had a Twitter link, you could do that. I don't have one that I use for business. Instagram, we've got that. If you use a YouTube channel or LinkedIn, Market Center DBA, all these things pulled in. So I didn't have to do that. But my office technically also has South Lake in the name. So we'll put that there as well, just for compliance purposes. Got everything else in there. So we were good to go. So we could hit save and apply. And we'll scroll down, make sure it added that South Lake in there right there. Yep, it did. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and test test since I already named the other one properly and we're going to go ahead and hit save landing page and this is just saving it as a draft. I've uh, done so many MLS inputs that I am scared to publish things right off the bat because I've done that and then lost a whole listing many many times because it was difficult so I always like to save a draft first so see test test as a draft you have not published so we can click on the three dots edit And if you had anything to edit, you could come in here and change it. If you were good to go though, which I am, 
You can also click around up here. There are other things you can do with coding and things like that. Um, I am not fluent in any type of coding in any way, so I am not even gonna try to mess with that. Um, this is just for the basics for beginners today. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit publish page. Would you like to make this a landing page visible to others? Yes, I do. And when I do that, you can see right here, here's the URL, we can click on it. And bam, this is what our site looks like. Obviously, my headshot is my own personal problem that I need to fix, but this is what the sign in form looks like. And here's the first image it shows. Again, that pending is not there, so it really did delete. So just be careful clicking around on the content whenever you're doing this. Pulled in our MLS description as well right here, which is great. And it's also got all the listing photos right here. If we had done a video, you could also embed a video, which I will show you all how to do momentarily. Let me look at this chat real quick. Chris said, I can get separate landing pages to work, but not the actual my site pages to work. Hmm, okay. I'm not sure what the issue with that would be, Chris. Um, we can talk after this class because I already covered the agent sites part and I'll upload that video to the office YouTube page today. Um, KW Central 75 on YouTube. That's, if y'all did not see my Facebook post, that's where I'm putting all of the Zoom videos, all these classes, that's where they're going because I was running into issues with cloud storage through Zoom. So just one central easy spot to search KW Central 75 is your YouTube channel and you can see all the classes. Um, but yeah, we can chat later, Chris. You can find me on Facebook and just reach out to me um, or email me or call me and we'll figure that out. I'm not sure what your issue is. We can talk one on one later though. Um, so it pulls in everything there. And okay, sounds good, Chris. So we can see what's going on in Heritage. We've got all of our info right here. So everything looks nice and pretty here. And I wanted to show you all this real quick. Over on the right side, you see we've got our URL and our name. We've got leads as well. And this says one lead because I actually filled it out. But I want to show you all something real quick. So on test test, let me look at this chat. All right, so you can see on here, hang on. All right, so anyway, you can get leads through here because we have a lead capture form on here. Remember we put that on there. So let's go up to this test test page. And this is what the consumer sees. So it doesn't know that I'm the guy who created this as I'm looking at it at this link. You know, I'm not in my command anymore. Um, if you had other listing, okay, so I'm reading a message from Kyle real quick. If you had other listings, can you put the other listings at the bottom of that landing page of the open house sign in? That's a great question. Let's see. I believe, I'm not sure how many listings you can add to a page. Let me put it that way. So let's see, Kyle, let's do a real live, keeping me on my toes. So let's say that was for that open house and we wanted to go down here and everything was good and kosher there. And then we wanted to pull another listing. Could drop that right there. All right, and let's hit configure. And so see, now we've got another listing right here, Kyle. So we're just working through this together. We'll hit browse listings. And let's say I actually have sold a home in that neighborhood before. So let me select that one from back in the day. And I'll hit that and I'll let's see, let's say where my image was good, everything was good. We'll hit save. So let's say you also had this other listing, Kyle, from your question. Oh, well, let's see. Let me see here, hang on. I'm trying to figure out why it, okay, so it thinks they're all configured. Let me save it, let's just see. Okay, so if we view the new landing page, let's see. So it's got the first house that we did, Farmer Drive. And if we scroll down, no, it did not update, let's see. Because that is a good question, let's see if we can advertise multiple listings. Let me try one more time to configure, because see on here it says Askew Street, so let me see. And then it's got that one as well. So let's just start configuring. So for this listing, we've got Farmer Drive selected, great. And then for this listing, we've got Askew, great. So we'll hit save. And 
And okay, well, that is the picture for the other house with that information. And then, see, it's not configuring this. I think it's freaking out on us, Kyle, to answer your question. I think it doesn't like that there are two listings on this page. So let, let me just publish it and see. I've saved it multiple times. So let's see real quick. And I'll go one step further. I'll even refresh this page. So there are no possibilities for an error. Let's see. And of course we caught my laptop on the on the slow day. Clear up some. All right, so let's see here. Got our sign in, okay. So we've got the, now we've got the wrong picture for the wrong house. And then if we scroll down, we've got all their other pictures. So that's a problem. And then if we scroll down here, it didn't even configure it. So the site just freaked out on us, Kyle. Um, so learning for all of us as of April, 2020, you cannot add multiple multiple uh, listings to a page. Um, but so good to learn as we go. You know, y'all are keeping me on my toes, which is great. But I did want to show you real quick. Let me make sure I update this to the new new link because either way I'll get the, but anyway. So let's say this was all good and great. And we were in our open house. So this person, we handed them the, the tablet and they said, okay, we'll go ahead and sign in. So this is what I want to show you all real quick. And I want to see if contacts will be nice with me and let me show you all this. Oh, AA lead. All right, so they would hit, I'm not a robot. And then they would hit send. And this is much faster when the computer actually catches up with the internet. But this would save automatically. And then we'll go over to contacts and I'll show y'all. Yeah, I think we're overloading my computer. Let me close something real quick. All right, let's go back to this. Okay, well, let's hit send again. Well, we're being difficult. Internet doesn't want to be nice today. AA lead. I'm not a robot. Send. Let's try our other one. Maybe this one's having an issue just because the site itself is being difficult. Let's try my one I created yesterday for Farmer Drive. It will recognize if you're doing tests like this, if it's a fake phone number like 111. That's why I'm actually putting an area code. Okay, let's try this one. Nope, it's just my RAM. Well, that's great for teaching. I'm trying to clear some up for you. Yeah, right, Kyle. Yay, technology. Always great when it works until it doesn't. Well, long story short, let's see. Let me try to save this one more time. Okay, well, it's being difficult. Anyway, what I was getting at here is it'll show a green bar right here that'll say, congratulations, you successfully submitted your form or something like that. And you can come over here, over to your contacts, and immediately it will be uploaded as a contact, or as a lead rather, here into command. Um, I archived my lead now, I wish I hadn't, that I had done for my previous test on this. Um, but you could come in here and you could either click on lead pool right there, or you could just hit filters. And for lead source, it'll show you on there, it, I just know this because I've looked at it already. KW landing page is gonna be the source for that lead. And you could also just toggle this as well if you wanted to look through your database this way and hit apply and just type on your leads. I don't have any at the moment. So, 
Oh, okay, verification expired. Let's try this one more time, see if I can show y'all. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and that's fine. All right, well, my computer's having plenty of plenty of problems today. But anyway, I wanted to show you all also real quick before we finish up. I just wanna give you all plenty of time for the sales before the sales meeting starts rather. Uh, we'll edit the one that I was doing yesterday. And what you, actually, no, I already changed that one. So let me edit this one. I'm gonna show you how to put a video on here. Um, so we did the test that we had created earlier on this site was for a vert or a, in-person open house, but we could also do it and just change a few things on this and make it a virtual open house as well. So let me um, delete some of these things. Okay, here's how you delete, by the way. I just clicked on the block that I wanted to select. You can hit that delete button. I'm gonna leave that one there even though the picture's wrong and just delete this one though. And you could also change where it is by going up or just moving it around, or you could duplicate as well if you wanted to do that, if you needed multiple snaps or multiple lead form, different things, you can do that. But anyway, let's say, and you could also even go even deeper on this and we'll talk about that in a minute, but let me not get ahead of myself here. So we'll have our pictures right here. Let me look at this chat. So what we can do is we can pull in a video. So we'll do a video content block after the listing, but before the snap, let's do that. So we'll drop that right there and we can hit configure and it automatically sent us to video because it knew that was the only one that was not configured. So something like check out the virtual tour. You could also write in a description or you can leave it blank. I'll just leave it blank for this one. Video URLs. It's very specific and picky about which ones it'll let you do. And it'll tell you right off the bat if it'll allow it or not right here. Um, whenever you try to do it, it'll go red and it won't let you save if it won't. YouTube videos are the most common ones that I've seen posted here as URLs. Um, I had to download my Adobe Spark video and you would it for Animoto as well, I assume, um, because it does not recognize those, just like the MLS doesn't recognize them for virtual tours. So you would need to download and upload your video here. So I'm just click right there. I already downloaded it this morning. So I can just click that. Lisa, to answer your question about when you get a new lead in command, that is a great question. Lisa asked, how do I know when I get a new lead in command? Will I get an email? I don't remember if you receive an email, but let me just pop over real quick to command in a different view. So one way on the computer is you would have this right here. This is when over an hour ago, I did this lead when I was just trying to show you all that from my open house form. I had done this and I had this little red dot next to my bell icon. And that's how I knew I had the lead, but also I got Kelly notified. So you need to make sure you have your Kelly app downloaded as well, because that's where you'll get notified. Hey, you have a lead, here's their information. And then if you wanna, you can see everything on Kelly as well that you'd see on the desktop. Um, but you could go from there and decide how you wanted to do everything. So you do get notified and, uh, and get a idea of what's going on. And let me hop back over here now. So we've got our video uploaded. We're gonna go ahead and hit save and apply. And now we can scroll down real quick and see. How are we looking? Great, so we've got that video and even though it's a four minute video, it's gonna upload in HD, no problem. So this will play some sound. Just want to make sure everything looked good so you can see what the what the public will see you can also just go into full screen mode as well if you needed to so that looks great to me i'm going to go ahead and back out so to kind of tie in the classes that i've been doing for the past few days so you can create a site you can then add in a virtual tour if you've done that through adobe spark or any other um, imovie anything like that you can add in a video i think they have to be mp4 or um M I can't remember the other one, but they have two options that they usually allow for video file uploads. And then let's say we wanted to take this one step further, okay? So let's publish this page. So let's say yes. 
let's go ahead and publish this page. Say we're good to go. We want this to be on. We want to use this one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave the URL, but I am going to open it up real quick and just copy the URL. And to tie all this in to like probably three of my classes that I've done, let's say to go back to campaigns for a sec, back to last week, let's say we had run a Facebook ad campaign and you wanted to get leads through that and then you wanted to send them somewhere. Obviously, you need to send them somewhere once you get their uh, information. So let's go back to the Facebook ad I had created last week. So I went to campaigns. Now I'm going to edit this test two campaign I made with y'all. And we could go in here and click on the channel options on Facebook ad. And you can select. Now, here's one thing I would, I had talked about it in the video, but you get more exposure with face using the Facebook lead gen form and instead of using your site. Um, but and then you can also choose the destination URL here. So what I'm getting at here is, for me personally, I'm using the Facebook lead gen form when I run a Facebook ad every time. And you've got your call to action button. But then I've also got the destination URL. You can now make that your landing page for whatever it was. And it would tell me right now if it was not gonna let it do that. So anyway, the page is good. You can also hit choose site as well. And you could see all your different sites. So you didn't even have to copy and paste like I did. You could just hit choose site. It'll drop down all of your different landing pages that you've created or pages in your app or on your uh, website rather. And you can see all of those here. So this one was test test. So I've got that right there. And if you were already going to have a lead capture through Facebook, may you probably wouldn't have it. You probably wouldn't have a lead capture still on, on this one specifically. So you'd probably go in to your um, to your landing page and take out the lead form for that one if you're already getting their lead gen uh, info information already. Um, but that just kind of to show y'all how you can tie everything in. Um, what questions do we have? I know it was a lot and it was really just me talking today because y'all will need to play with it and do it yourselves to kind of get an idea of how all this stuff works. But what questions do we have? Do we have any more in-depth questions? Do you want me to go over something that I might have uh, skipped or recover? What are, what are we thinking here? I'll take silences that everyone is doing great. So if we're all good to go, I can go ahead and, uh, and finish up for today. Let me make sure we don't have a chat. All right, well, if we don't have any questions, then y'all, um, we'll go ahead and finish up for today so y'all have a full hour before the sales meeting and I will see y'all on there. We got a chat real quick. You're very welcome, Kyle, appreciate that. Um, as always, happy to help out with y'all and, and work with y'all. You can always reach out to me through Facebook um, or you can email me or call me or text me at 817-939-9855. And I'm gonna upload this on YouTube today as well, um, sometime this afternoon after your sales meeting. So let me see these real quick. Appreciate all the thank yous, everyone. So hope you all have a good rest of your day. I'll see you on the call in an hour for the sales meeting. Y'all have a good one, all right? See y'all next time.